Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you a replay between Numbers and Nagel. This is a apparently very interesting replay. I was heard from them that it was a very interesting replay, so this should be fun to watch. I'm not sure exactly what's going to go on, but I heard there are some paradoxes, so be prepared because this is going to be a wild ride. Let's get started. So, Numbers is currently playing Grekum, I believe, in the top right corner. And Nagel is apparently playing Vekir in the bottom right corner. Or bottom left corner. Yes, he is. That is Numbers and Nagel. So, Nagel is here, and Numbers is in the top left corner. So, yes, both players have gotten their stuff set up. And now they are continuing. So, Numbers is going for the standard Grekum setup, where he has his start with the Arcticus going out tanking. And Nagel, on the other hand, is going for a more economic build, which... Both players basically going for a similar build, and oh, sorry, there's no volume once again. And there we go. That's better. Get some nice music in there. So anyway, as I was saying, Numbers is playing pretty standard for Grekum, and so is Nagel. And Numbers is about five seconds or so. No, actually, he's increasing his leads, but ten seconds or so above Nagel. Nagel is also fast forward. So the players are about ten seconds apart, so both players actually are going for economic builds. And Nagel is going to be attacking very quickly as units are at the center of the map. Shinvir and Tethvir from the looks of it, yes. And they will be attacking very shortly. Both of them attacking the main base. This is rather unusual. Most players will send one of them to attack the top right, which I should point out. This is Hills 1.4.6, included in the new version 1.0.2.0. And I think, I don't know if Zato is going to be hanging around. Doesn't look like it, so Numbers is not going to be changing around that. But Nagel is going to be changing... Nothing, no, no... Nagel is... No, he is following slightly, but no, he's he has moved back. He's making sure he's not going to screw anything up with that. And building a depot, it looks like his Zion Veer is going back to his rear to build up a bit. And no, his attack is still going, so he's just further, going further back into the base. And it looks like... Oh, I should have to queue up. Okay, I'll have to queue them in. I was going to point out that I actually changed around the map a bit. The infantry path no longer exists. There is a vehicle accessible path as well, blocked by an inceptor or a by pieces on one side. Basically, blocked by destructible rocks, essentially. And this will allow for vehicles to get in more easily, but it should be able to get there. I wasn't sure. I guess it can't <laughs> with one click. But anyway, I also moved the base out in this area slightly and added one additional QP and one additional LC box, just to make it a bit more. Whoa! Holy crap! Never mind. Make it a bit more of an incentive to expand, but this is much better to watch. So right now, Nagel is at the present. He's about two minutes behind Numbers. Numbers doesn't see any of this happening. He is, as far as you can tell, there is an attack coming in. He sees that the attack is coming near the present. He's two minutes above the present, and it looks like he is mostly focused. No, he is focusing on figuring out what's going on there. He sees the foundation, and it's going to start retro preparing for it. Going back about two minutes before, or a minute and a half before the attack actually happens and sending some octaves in the back, getting them up, and it looks like he forgot about the destructible rocks, but anyway. So, yeah, that is the idea, is to make sure that the destruction does happen. I will have to check that out a bit further. Anyway, the point is that... Actually, I think I'm going to move this ramp up. If move this ramp up here, it should be fine. Regardless, the way the options are set up, they will be able to deal with these forces coming in from Nagel. So Nagel will have to make this an echo attack if he wants to do anything from it. The red time wave is, as we can see here, carrying the loss of this attack. So Nagel really should go back his base. From what he can tell, from his point of view, the attack has been successful. Got a lot of bastions and destroying everything. But Numbers has managed to hold it off further in the past. He managed to retro-prepare effectively, and that was all he needed to keep himself in the game. So Numbers is doing fine right now. While Nagel, actually Numbers has jumped back quite a bit. Na Nagel has jumped back about three minutes. I'm not sure if he's going to change around how he's going to do this. One of his, his Tethbeer is going to the north side of the map. Machinevere is continuing into the main base. No, it's going south. So he is going to be changing up the attack somewhat. Avoiding the Octo. Numbers is aware that the attack should happen. But he is not aware yet. He will be aware very shortly that the attack has not happened. Because he sees in the timeline, it is going away. So Nagel will not be dealing a whole lot of damage. But he is dealing a slight amount of damage. Looks like... Yes, he actually is going to be able to deal a small amount of damage. I imagine that this is something that he just jumped away from before propagating. And he will be able to probably not do too much. Numbers is well prepared, but this is close to the unplayable pass. Numbers may not be fully aware of what's going on. And an Octo is coming in. Here's the damage we saw. So the, the Shinbeer is actually coming under attack, and it is starting to attack. But 
Nagel is going to be able to avoid most of this. And no, actually, Numbers has managed to change around his strategy to get Nagel's unit. So Nagel will not be able to deal as much damage as he would have liked. Looks like this attack up here would have... This is going to be dangerous. His attack up here was... Let's see, he lost... Yeah, he was dealing damage from RP up there. But it looks like that won't actually be able to do too much. Because the time wave is coming over and will stop it. So the test gear will not be able to deal much damage to that little... To that resource processor up in the north. So Numbers is just jumping forward to make sure nothing is happening. He sees there's an attack up in the timeline near the present. Which we see right now is actually going to be just this Shin Beer outside of his base. So Numbers has a Shin Beer to deal with outside of his base. But that shouldn't be a big problem. What is the big problem though is that Nagel is... Nagel's has the center of the map with one unit in there, but Numbers has an Oshpod coming in to deal with that, so it won't last long. Nagels probably should really... I don't know what he's focused on exactly right now, other than the Zion Turcher. He does have quite a bit of money, as you can see here. 179... or 189 QP LC. Getting a lot of LC, not a lot of QP. And definitely building for that, getting another Zion Turcher. I'm surprised he's not getting more Zion Pulses or just more QP RPs. He is getting more QP RPs in this southeast base, however, and a Zion Turcher coming in, not cloaked, very strangely not cloaked, this is from his point of view, he is focused on this point in time, and he is not cloaking it, I do not know why he is not doing that, that is what you do with Zion Turchers, he has jumped back, it looks like he may, there we go, there he's cloaking it, phew, I was worried there he might actually not be cloaking it, that'd be just ridiculous, you cloak Zion Turchers, that's why you get Zion Turchers, because they have cloak, they also have the ability to upgrade to skip teleport, but that's like that for all vector units, so hey, anyway, numbers, Fully aware this attack is happening, but not doing anything to deal with it quite yet. He is, however, focused on getting an Octopod into Nagel's base, but Nagel's depot has not propagated in the future, I don't think. Let me just double check. Looks like, yes, no, it has propagated in the future, and that Octopod will be able to damage it heavily. Jumping back about two minutes, we see at the 453 mark, the Octopod has started to, This is when the Octopod starts to attack. Domes were attempted to be built in the main base, but they are not going to be effective. Numbers at this point does have advanced structures, and just try back in the present. No, he has not changed that at all, so Numbers does have advanced structures, and Nagel, from the looks of it, has no real tech, even when he's focused, but especially not when Numbers is focused. He is, however, getting an aerial control center trying to deal with this attack coming in, but it looks like Numbers has simply decided to make it a feint. He appears to have echoed out the attack entirely, jumping around near the present to just double-check. I'm going to make sure that I know what's going on here. The the Octopod looks like it is attacking here, it is attacking here. Jumping back about 30 seconds, the Octopod has been cancelled. So, Numbers was making that an Echo attack. But jumping back further, he's actually... He is committing to it, so he is right next to the Impelo Pass, committing to this attack, and moving it away. So, this is where he moves it away. It's not totally an Echo attack, it's actually just an aborted attack. And he jumps forward about 2 minutes, so we're at the 6.32 mark. It's about 2 minutes ahead of the last focus time. So, 6.32 mark, or 6.40 mark now. 7.22 mark, the Octopod is dealing a lot of damage, so Numbers... The blue time wave is what is going to be stopping this attack from actually doing anything. Nagel, on the other hand, is going to be able to deal a fair amount of damage to... Man, this is hard to hear. Here, there was an RP actually at number set up inside of Nagel's natural, which his Zion Church is able to deal with. Numbers has not bothered to deal with that yet. And Nagel jumping back about 2 minutes to the 543 mark to stop the Octo in the first place from building this RP. But it looks like he didn't actually go and do that completely. More focus, it seems, on building up. Actually, he's not really building much of anything right now. He has enough chrono energy for set, for five more orders, and it looks like he is going to be spending most of that on getting the Zion Turcher microed around the base, just seeing what numbers is up to. Make sure he knows what's going on in the rear, make sure he knows what's going on in the front. If he has that, then he'll be able to deal with whatever numbers is doing. Although, of course, this is Akron, which means that what you see may not necessarily be what ultimately happens. That being said, we're near the unplayable pass, and at the 618 mark, quite near the unplayable pass, and here we go, Numbers has sent back some Pharopods. I'm gonna go from this point of view. So Pharopods have been sent back from the present down to the unplayable past, and they are not currently being propagated right now. Those Pharopods are being left to be propagated by the unplayable past. No, sorry, my mistake. <laughs> I haven't done this at all. Anyway, Pharopods are actually being sent forward to deal quite a bit of damage, and it looks like Numbers is... Just double checking what's going on, making more units in the present to send back, and these far pods are dealing a lot of damage, getting rid of that foundation, but one of them was destroyed in the process from the looks no it wasn't, it just got retreated, sorry. Numbers was remicroing them to make sure that foundation did not get in the way, so the foundation has been destroyed. And actually, what am I saying? Nagels doesn't even have auto defense yet, he's just getting auto defense now, but this is at the 657 mark, and the attack happens somewhere around the six six minute mark or five fifty-five mark. 
A bunch of Shin Turtles being built, however, trying to take advantage of what's here. And the offense has been completed, but one foundation will not be enough to save him. And now Teth Turtles is coming in, and Shin Turtles will be coming in very shortly to help them out. We'll be detecting the Far Pods, the Far Pods attack will be ultimately undone. Or at least not undone, but at least it'll be defended against adequately. So that was not particularly deep in the playable pass, but Numbers has actually, from looks of it, re chronoported these Far Pods. Yes, he has. He's re chronoported them back further. Fighting a Zion Turcher, unfortunately that far pod is not particularly strong, so won't be able to do much. These, This attack was probably defended against, but this is going to be very exciting very shortly, and this is when the first Chronoport happened. Nagels, on the other hand, is having to deal with these Chronoports. And yes, Chronoport departure, we see that right now. The attack is, however, coming in from Nagels. He's countering very heavily with this Shin Turcher and Tet Turcher force that he built to defend, and it's going to be dealing a lot of damage for Numbers' base. Numbers, however, is re chronoporting as well. I'm just going to double check what's went on here. So about here, another chronoport happens, and yes, here we are. So more Farpods have been chronoported back, and they will be... Where was that chronoport anyway? Here we are. So the Farpods have been chronoported back in the Unplayable Past, and it looks like they aren't really doing anything much, but they will be doing stuff soon. I'm sure queued, queued orders have occurred. And here, Octopod as well being chronoported back. So numbers are just chronoporting back most of his forces. This Farpod was from Chronoport, the Octopod was also Chronoported at some point. And the Farpod is being Chronoported as well, so... This is being very exciting, more Chronoport forces. So, Numbers is just trying to echo back as much as he can to get these Farpods back in here. Most of these Chronoports will actually not, I don't think, ultimately be resolved. It's hard to tell, being that they are being done with units that... I don't think Numbers is setting them up quite near each other. I really should be focusing more on where the units are. So it looks like the units are being sent and will be quite related to each other in this entire setup. So numbers, re chronoporting and re chronoporting all of his units. I don't actually, you know what? I don't think this is completely paradox, but apparently there is a paradox involved. And actually, I'm gonna just double check. It looks like back here in the green time wave, a lot of damage is being dealt to Nagels, and more chronoports are occurring. More firepots are being built for further chronoports. While more attacks happen in the RPs, right now, Nagels has very little power, but a lot of QP and LC. And Numbers is running a bit low on QP, but this isn't exactly where he's setting up most of his attacks. And his chronoports are mostly falling off in the playable pass, just double checking. It looks like one of them has actually not happened. I think one of them actually did get aborted, so it looks like he will have fewer chronoports than he would have liked, but I think that he will be able to keep it up and keep his chronoports going. And yeah, Nagels is actually. Wow, here I thought there was going to be paradox. I heard there'd be paradox. The numbers, you lied to me. You said there'd be. This would be a massive, many world paradox game, and no, it's just a pretty straight. It looks like there might have been some echo chronoporting and possibly some permacloning. And yeah, it looks like some permacloning, but really, no. There's no, not even permacloning. The the chronoport departures here are still there. So yeah, this wasn't this wasn't paradoxed at all. This. This was a complete... I mean, this, okay, yes, there was a lot of chronoports. Definitely a lot of chronoports, and he basically pushed back all of his units he could as far down the timeline as he could. But it looks like... And if you're wondering, Bubble Wrap is this three-reef strategy. All of them close enough just to heal each other, and also healing everything inside, so it's extremely difficult to attack without heavy, heavy artillery. It's obviously, it's beatable, you just need heavy artillery, or bombers, or a lot of units. You can't just attack with harassment force. And of course, with chronoporting, he says, makes it hard to stop it, and it makes it hard to counter it in the past. So, numbers and nagels just double checking what's happening in the past. And in case you're wondering, no, this is completely consistent. Nothing is going to change about this. These are all chronoport departures, not arrivals. So, all the arrivals have fallen off the unplayable, the immutable past. I mean, so they cannot be undone. If they are undone, that will end up causing permaclones. So that won't be much use. Because the only way to really undo it would be to use enemy unit. You know, basically, if Nagels tried to attack, he'd end up causing permaclones to happen. So, really, not much going for. So, numbers are just double checking the timeline, making sure that nothing fishy is going on. And yeah, here's the chronoports and <laughs> six permaclones. Yeah, none of them were permaclones. They were all just there. Yeah, the rest, the other five are gonna CP too. And here's one more. Another one chronoports back. 
and another one, and another. They're all gonna chrono port back. You don't have, you do not have perfect clones. I'm sorry. Or at least, I don't think you do. Yeah, the way these numbers. So okay, this this faro pod, this faro pod apparently became this. No, he did get perma clones. My mistake, because these faro pods are all the parent faro pod. Delk went back in time and became that faro pod. Is the circles is the original unit, and the arrow points to the unit it will end up becoming. So yeah, these far pods basically, well okay, the blue time wave came and fixed that up a bit, but for the duration of the red time wave, until the blue time wave came, those far pods were basically each other's, their own parents. So yeah, these three far pods basically create an ontological paradox briefly, not permanently, but still not quite what I was expecting in terms of the amount of paradoxes going on. Oh, Numbers is still pushing it! Holy crap, I guess Nagel's, I mean, not totally dead yet, so Numbers is still pushing it, sending more units into the past, and setting up further Chronoports. So here we are, here's the Chronoport Faropod, right, basically as it's being progenerated, or where it would have been when progenerated, and I'm not sure where its parent unit is, but... No, it's just right here. So yeah, the Chronoport happens right now, and it looks like... Oh, hold, you know, he chrono-fragged the far pod, and then the Reef Triad just healed it up to full health within two seconds. Okay, that's pretty nuts. See, that, that's what I mean, that is pretty hard to get around, because even chrono-fragging isn't going to stop it. So that's what I figured would have happened, but, okay, this is, this is kind of nuts. I'm not sure what exactly is taking this long. Nagel's is, from his point of view, Nagel, sorry, did I say Nagel's? Sorry, Nagel. Nagel has pretty much lost everything, unfortunately, for him. He has a Zion Torture, and that's about it. I'm not sure what exactly he's waiting for. And numbers just continue to attack. Still playing around with the chrono porting, but of course not really doing too much. So I'd say that this game, I mean, there was a GG already, so this game is pretty much over. There isn't really much to watch now. And just double checking that there isn't anything going on. No, it looks like no. I mean the players have GG. So okay, I'm just gonna call it. This is a this is the end of the game. So numbers has won. Well done to numbers. And unfortunately, I don't really have any other games right now. Version one zero. Oh, I'm sorry. Numbers, numbers clarify something. That apparently that entire thing was a single faropod, or at least that entire chain of chronoports, which is quite impressive. A lot of, but I'm not surprised. There was a lot of re-chronoports that occurred. So, okay, I can see what you mean. There was a lot of perma cloning in the sense that the further departures would not have really mattered because the arrivals would happen. So, yes, with enough QP and enough re ports you can cause permacloning. However, really to counter that would just be, well, basically build up more detection, build up more anti-air units. That's largely what you'd have to do. I mean, fire pods are kind of tricky because they're bombers and detectors. And Okay, Numbers is clarifying that it was not even re porting it was... Propagation skip? Wait, was that supposed to be an echo chronoport? I think what he's trying to say is that he... He chronoported those units and then chronoported them... Before the time wave caught up to them. So chronoport and then go forward and then chronoport and then go forward and chronoport. And then by the time the time wave realizes it's gone on it doesn't matter. So that would actually really, that would go a long way to explaining why three Faropods became the parent of a single Faropod. Because the game, and the parent of each other, that actually makes perfect sense now, because it was the same Faropod. Just chronoported in a weird order and all at once in a such a way that wasn't really expected. But hey, that, okay, a bit better than I thought, but honestly I expected a lot more oscillation of states. Generally when people say that a paradox has occurred, it means that the game is oscillating between multiple states, so each time wave changes drastically what's going on in the game because some chronoport arrivals did or didn't happen, depending on the time wave. And unfortunately, there are really no other no other replays with 1020. There was some issues with Steam on the update, so not a lot of games have been played. So I apologize, this is the only game that I will be casting tonight, but hopefully that was still fun for you guys. I hope to be able to cast more games as... 1020 starts to actually properly get distributed and Steam managed to get it onto its servers properly because that will be great when it happens. So anyway, for now, everyone, have a good night. Okay, apparently not.